Today I'm going to share with you the biggest mistake that everybody makes with their pressing. Now, when I say everybody, I don't say everybody as an exaggeration. That also does include me. I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty confident in saying that it's a leading cause of a lot of common shoulder issues that people experience in the gym as well. So if shoulder pain is something that you've dealt with or are currently dealing with, this video is probably going to help you out a ton as well. But the fact is, this mistake also applies to any sort of pressing motion, whether it's a flat press or an incline or a decline or even things like a dip or an overhead press. It's keeping their shoulder blades pulled back and down the entire time as they perform their pressing exercise. Pull your shoulders back, lift your chest up, arch your back or squeeze your shoulder blades back together. You see, these are cues that I was using for a very, 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 very large portion of my professional coaching career when I was working in gyms. And if I could go back in time, it's probably the one of the first things that I would go about changing with how I worked with people. You see, in theory, at a glance, it does make a little bit of sense. Squeezing everything back really tightly creates this like, sensation of stability and this shelf and this base of support for you to then press off. And by consciously engaging and jamming everything up together around the shoulder joints, it seems like it will provide as much stability to the shoulder joint as possible when performing a press movement. And that sounds like a really good thing, doesn't it? See, that was exactly what I thought for the longest time. But eventually, I started to question it the more that I learned about anatomy and, most importantly, the role that the brain plays in coordinating human movement. So here's what I mean when I say that. When we press, the main muscles that are working to coordinate this motion here are your chest muscles, or for the anatomy nerds out there, your pectoralis major. We perform what's recognized as a press motion or this punching motion by our chest muscles here, pulling our arm bone here across our body towards the midline. So if you do that with a bent elbow like this, that's a pressing movement. The angle of the bench or the line of pull isn't really relevant at this point. So in order for us to get as much as we can out of our chest muscles and to perform the press movement, our chest has to be able to freely pull our arm across our body. But if we pull our shoulder blades back and down the entire time, we immediately restrict this action to occur properly. And this is where we start to run into a lot of issues. You see, there's a natural rhythm that occurs within the body when it comes to movements known as scapulohumeral rhythm. To make it sound a lot less nerdy for you, what it means is that in order for your arm here to be able to move, your shoulder blade back here has to be able to move as well. And by the same logic, if you keep your shoulder blade completely still and fixated in points, that will restrict how much you can move your arm as well. So we all instinctively understand this. Imagine you're going to like throw a ball or throw a punch. Try doing either one of those movements whilst keeping your shoulder blades pinned back and down, and you'll immediately notice just how strange it feels to be punching or throwing, and most importantly, how weak it is as a motion. Because we lose all of our power as the brain senses that it isn't a strong or optimal position. Because your chest is attempting to pull the arm forwards across your body to complete this press motion, but your shoulder blades are being pinned into one fixed position that limits the movements of the arm. So you're literally fighting against your own body. Now, long term, this might cause an inhibition, or what's, I guess, loosely called a deactivation of other important muscles of the shoulder joint, such as the serratus anterior, which could lead to a host of issues down the road with shoulder pain and impingement. Anecdotally, I found that whenever people came to me with shoulder problems, this is one of the key areas that was lacking, and this is one of the biggest cues that was causing the issue to occur. And once you started to correct it, the shoulder pain started to improve most of the time. So why is this cue so popular? First of all, as I already mentioned, I think it's so popular because it's, it's something that we all resonate with for, for its simplicity. We all strive for this ideal upright posture in life and think that chest up and shoulders back and having this big arch in our back is good. Even if you were sitting at a desk with a perfectly straight back with your chest up, even that is not necessarily a good position to be in, especially if you're going to hold this statically for a long period of time. Your body was designed to move and move frequently. So we should be doing everything we can to allow for this and not demonize any position or motion whatsoever. 
even this position here. Now, I also think that it gained a lot of popularity thanks to powerlifting. The strongest bench pressers in the world do their lifts with a massive arch in their back and are consciously cueing the position of shoulder blades to be squeezing or pulled back together and down towards their hips. And hey, like, they're the strongest people in the world. So clearly it must be doing something, right? And they all have incredible amounts of strength and muscle mass as well. But if we start to have a look past that and understand logically, what is the real reason why powerlifters do these things with their body? It's to improve their leverages and to decrease the range of motion so they can lift the heaviest weight possible from point A to point B for one repetition for their sport. A powerlifter doesn't actually care how much their chest is working or even technically speaking how strong their body is. Now, that might sound kind of strange to you, but the fact is, all that really matters is moving the heaviest weight possible. And the person with the best leveraged position by decreasing the range of motion is going to come out on top. Obviously, increasing strength and increasing muscle mass does help a ton. And powerlifters do focus heavily on building both. But I know for sure that they can also agree upon the fact that if they could also decrease their range of motion by an extra inch or somehow get into a better leverage position by modifying their technique in some way, technique is really king when it comes to expressing strength in the powerlifting sport. So, but for everybody else, the rest of us out here who aren't powerlifters and who care predominantly about building muscle mass, building total upper body strength, and preserving the integrity of our joints, here is what I recommend. Don't arch your back aggressively. Maintain what's called a neutral spine. What that looks like is not flaring the rib cage up like this, but instead keeping the rib cage stacked over the pelvis here in this upright position and then maintaining it when I'm laid back in a horizontal position. You might find it more comfortable to elevate your feet up a little bit higher onto maybe a step to help to maintain this position without having a big arch in your back. As a general rule, if you can reach a hand or so under your lower back, there's a little bit too much of an arch going on, although this will vary a little bit from person to person. So, stack them um, uh, above each other, and let's grab this barbell off. Now, when you press, you can pull your shoulder blades back as you bring the bar down to your chest, if you like, but don't keep them there when you go through the press motion. Okay? Instead, let them move freely. Think less about what your shoulder blades are doing and think a lot more about pulling your upper arm across towards your midline as far as it will go. It's important to not go in the complete opposite direction as well though and to think about like protracting and pressing away like that because that's not going to be ideal either. But there is a sweet spot when we go through the press movements where your shoulder blades are allowed to move freely without um, being kept fixated back and down. Now, it can be a really hard habit to break to keep your shoulder blades back and down the entire time if you're used to cueing it for a long, long period of time. So it's often useful to add in a couple of accessory movements into your workouts to help to retrain the brain. So my top two recommendations here for accessories are to incorporate push-ups and the landmine press. You can also add in extra band resistance to these exercises if you want. Both of these movements naturally force you to pull your shoulder blades forwards more as you press into this protracted and upwardly rotated position that is often lacking from years of over cueing in the opposite position of being pulled back and down. So simply adding in a few sets of 10 to 20 reps here can make a huge difference to your overall shoulder movements, bench press strength and chest development long term. Initially, I actually like to do these movements first in the workout before going to my main pressing exercises. This helps to prime the right motion to occur, which then gets ingrained when I do the main pressing exercise of the day. 